Welcome back to another Reaper blog video. Today we're looking at Fury 800, which is an emulation of the Poly 800, a 1983 synth that was kind of complicated to use, but ended up being pretty popular, kind of a classic. And uh, yeah, this is a really cool emulation of that. And so here's the website for this full bucket music. This is a free plugin. And if you are into retro synth sounds, this is a great place to look. They didn't ask me to make a video about this. I just came across this, I think in a, a list of like best free synths 2021 or something like that. And uh, yeah, I decided to check it out and kind of liked it. There will be a link to this in the description of the video. So in this demo track, all the synths were Fury 800 mixed with a couple extra plugins for EQ, saturation, reverb, that sort of thing. I love that this is a fully resizable interface. You can just drag the corner to resize it and it looks crystal clear at any size. We've got this very retro looking interface, but it's almost exactly like the real hardware, which had this horrible parameter value function where Every single parameter is adjusted through uh, selecting the parameter number and then giving it a value. And you got to use this keypad or up and down buttons. And it's really not intuitive. Like what you see here down at the bottom was really just like a chart that could show all the possible parameters and values. Most of the parameters were just on or off as well. So, you know, that's, that's not really ideal. And this plugin makes a lot of the parameters actually adjustable. When version one of this plugin came out, they had made it without actually using the real one. And then in version two, uh, they made it more like the real hardware because I had some to compare to. Um, but if you want to see the original version of it, it's bucket mode, just click on the mode button at the top and the lights turn green. And so this was like his interpretation of what this is supposed to be like based on what he's researched, based on the circuits and everything. Um, but there is a clear uh, sound difference, especially in the, um, the envelopes. Uh, the decay goes a lot longer and things like that. So we've got volume, there's a plus six dB in bright mode, the amount of pitch bend and the speed of the sequencer. This has a built-in chord memory and uh, step sequencing, which is kind of interesting. Um, that's something from the original synth and um, was emulated in pretty much the same way in here. For selecting parameters and selecting programs or presets, you've got this keypad, which is interestingly goes from one to eight. There's no zero, there's no nine. There's a bank number and then a program number. So it's like bank one through eight program one through eight. If you're on a program and you click on bank hold, it'll put a little dot here and that will stay. And then any of the other single digits will increase the, the uh, program number. And then this button switches between uh, loading the programs or presets or changing the parameters. Every parameter is individually adjustable. 
So there's different, and it's marked in different sections. So we've got the first digitally controlled oscillator and the second, there's a noise generator, there's your filter section, the core is on off, and then there's three envelope generators, the modulation generator, uh, additional controls for the sequencer. This is almost like a uh, additive synth. It's got those, um, the feet parameters, like a, like a tone wheel organ would, where you can add in additional harmonics. Uh, this is actually just kind of splitting the original oscillator into multiple signals, something like that. Uh, the original had on and off, but in this you actually have a volume control for each of those um, different kind of uh, oscillators that come out of that, or signals that come out of that oscillator. Octave controls for the second oscillator, you can blend between um, kind of a, a saw wave and a square wave. There isn't a sine or triangle wave. Uh, you can kind of just blend between these different oscillators. On a scope, it doesn't really look like a square wave either. We've got volume controls or level controls for each of the oscillators. With the second oscillator, we can add in an interval that it doubles to uh, the original width, so up to an octave, a detune control. And then here's the filter section. So it's just a low pass filter, resonant low pass filter, which can follow the keyboard or we can assign it to the modulation. So I'm gonna to go to the initial program. So that's how it sounds. It's uh, maybe going through a bit of processing, just going through the limiter at the end. So let's start with the volume of the second oscillator down. I'm gonna go up an octave on my keyboard. So it's one oscillator, but it's split into four sort of separate, um, kind of like octaves. Hard to describe here. Here, It's like kind of different sets of harmonics. And then they can be blended in at different amounts. And then the overall level set here. That will be controlled by the digital envelope generator one. Now this envelope generator has a very interesting additional uh, breakpoint and slope parameter that you really never see. Another slope between the decay and the sustain. So if the decay level is high and the slope and the sustain level is high, but the slope level is low, it will rise up and then fall and then rise up again to the sustain level. And then when you release the key, then the release mode is there. So that middle section is kind of weird. Actually, let me pull up a oscilloscope to show this. So my sustain's all the way up and I'll put my slope level kind of up high and my decay up high and the breakpoint low. So very few synths have that sort of function where it, it does a short staccato note and then uh, swells up to the sustain level. And I'll raise the breakpoint level. And so it more quickly gets to that, um, the sustain level. The breakpoint all the way down. And so that slope, it's it's very weird. It's it's almost like a, it can almost be like a delay. So it can take several seconds, like ten seconds or so, to actually get up to the sustain level again with that slope parameter. Very strange, but kind of cool. And you can get this weird stutter effect if the slope and breakpoints are low. If the decay is, is lower than the sustain level, sometimes that happens. If we switch over to the second mode, the bucket mode, uh, and you can tell it's in that mode by the green LEDs, it's going to totally change the sound of those envelopes.
So it's an even longer envelope. All right, so here's program 15 or bank one, program five, called Resident Sweep, and this is the poly 800 mode. So you can hear that it has that double sweep, which is kind of cool. And if we put it into bucket mode, So it's almost like every preset has a variation uh, for it. I'm going to do the step sequencer. So I'm going to hit record, then press start. Value one is showing which step it's on. So when I press a note, it's going to record that note. And now we're at step 17, and I can take this out of record. And now if I press start, it'll just play that back and we can adjust the speed here. Now the, the speed doesn't follow the, uh, the sequencer unless we put it on, uh, set it to external and then press start again and it will still follow the the speed here just need to set it to 16th Now it doesn't get the tempo until you press play. So we've got the sequence and we can adjust a noise oscillator. Now if we don't hear it, that's probably because the envelope generator is all the way down. So instead of bringing in sustain, let's put in the decay. So that's pretty cool. Let's do um, some modulation. So here's the frequency. It doesn't snap to um, to bars and beats, unfortunately. So you kind of just have to eyeball it. And there's there's only 15 steps, or there's 16 steps, but it doesn't really follow the uh, the tempo very well. There's a delay, and then whether it's affecting the oscillator or the filter. And only 16 steps for the amount is kind of just too coarse, I find. So really that's about as subtle as you can make that filter uh, modulation. And there isn't any way to control the shape of the modulation either. So besides the modulation section, there is also an envelope generator for just the filter. And I think this one works a little bit nicer. But then what's the point of having this other one? 
Because even having it on a setting of one is like, that's pretty much perfect for that. So the original chorus is actually a mono chorus. And then um, one additional feature that they've added in this is a real stereo chorus, which just offsets the left and right. Compare this patch that I made with the uh, bucket mode. Let's move on to the menu. Different options for when you're loading, if you're loading everything or just the sound or just the sequence. Um, there's lots of banks that you can import from here, even the original Poly 800 sounds, which is pretty cool. And there's this option here that I recommend, show all parameters, and that overlays all of the parameters in here. So it's easier to just grab the parameter because if you just click anywhere, sometimes it, uh, it just jumps to that. And then in terms of what's happening in this project, I've got several layers. I'll just solo a couple of them. So the settings for this one look like this. So I've got the chorus on, I've got a short decay filters at about half using a bit of that envelope generator for the filter. I did end up EQing that quite a bit. I'm using this um, this automated all-pass filter, which I think is pretty cool. Which is basically just a, a phaser effect. And then a little bit of EQ here and the black box plugin. Uh, this is actually being ducked here, so. DV's Machines actually wanted me to mention um, that there was an update to duck recently, which added in grouping. So if you have, uh, you could have four separate groups and any changes you make to one of the plugins will affect the other grouped plugins, which is pretty cool. There's also solo modes for the high and low bands in the crossover mode. There may have been another feature in there, but those are the two main ones, which is pretty helpful. This next synth. More of a square wave synth melody. In this middle section, we've got this one. Simple sort of square wave pad with a long attack. This is a, a noisy pad. And then we've got this one. Thick bass line sort of arpeggio. Uh, there isn't a built-in arpeggio in there. Well, there's the sequencer, but um, in this case, I just scattered the notes. Now, because this is a polyphonic synth and I keep putting in monophonic lines, I decided to have some low notes sustained and then using the trigger mode for the filter, um, it actually works on sustained notes and uh, individual notes. So I'll show you what that looks like. And without that multi-mode function, filter envelope is only triggered 
uh, by the first note. With this set to two, every note will trigger the envelope. And then for panning, I'm using this stock plugin for uh, stereo separation. That's it for this demo. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, that's a free plugin. Try it out if you're interested. Works on pretty much every system. And it's pretty fun to play around with these retro sounds. And this weird interface kind of forces you to like really pay attention to what you're doing. Um, or else you can just go through the presets and have a bit of fun with that. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. <laughs>